Happy Halloween, everyone. We have done it. We have reached the fifth and final episode of Draculathon. Today, we'll be getting all up inside Gary Oldman's butt wig and review Bram Stoker's Dracula. And at the end of the review, I will go ahead and rank all five of the movies we've looked at so far in this series to help give you guys an idea of what my personal preferences are. I am Dracula. I'm gonna make him an offer, Campbell. You're gonna need a bigger boat. Dance off, bro. Me and you. So, Bram Stoker's Dracula. It's directed by Francis Ford Coppola, the talented director who brought us the epic war film Apocalypse Now, as well as two great Godfather movies. The movie also stars Gary Oldman as the Count in one of his great chameleon roles. I mean, the dude went through so many makeup changes in this movie that he probably should have died from skin cancer by now, but he blends into his role super well. On the other end of the spectrum is Keanu Reeves as Jonathan Harker, who in one of his lesser performances is about as interesting as This Wall. The movie also stars Winona Ryder as Mina, Anthony Hopkins as Van Helsing, Richard Grant as Dr. Seward, Carrie Yules as Arthur Holmwood, Sadie Frost as Lucy Westerna, Tom Waits as Renfield, Billy Campbell as Quincy Morris, and wait, holy shit. They have Quincy in this one? Yeah, did you know that in the original Dracula novel, there was actually a full-on cowboy character named Quincy Morris, who is from Texas, carries a bowie knife with him at all times, and is the all-around most stereotypically American thing that Bram Stoker's Irish butt could fart out. Given the oddity that this character is, it's no wonder that most Dracula adaptations leave him out since he doesn't really aesthetically fit with the Victorian Europe vibe. But this movie is titled Bram Stoker's Dracula, and it takes great pride in including many of the novel's details that are commonly left out by other adaptations. Of course, just because it is one of the most faithful adaptations we have this doesn't mean that this version follows the novel page for page. Given the structure of the novel, that would be nearly impossible for a movie to achieve. You would probably need a long-form television series to get the most accurate book-to-screen translation. The biggest departure from the novel that this film has is how it invests a large portion of the first act into connecting Count Dracula to the real-life Vlad the Impaler who may have been an inspiration for Stoker, but was never implied to have a connection with Dracula in the actual novel. And I personally like this part, as it's an aspect of Dracula lore that we're all familiar with, and here we finally get to see it put to screen in a really well done way. Another major change that this movie has is that it infers that Mina is the reincarnation of a woman named Elisabetta. A woman whom Vlad had loved in his pre-vampire days, and so Bram Stoker's Dracula becomes more of a gothic melodrama romance movie rather than a horror movie. Now, besides Gary Oldman and his ridiculous ass wig, what this movie is especially known for are its great special effects and design. This movie is absolutely dripping with gothic goodness. Ah, the visuals, the colors, the castle, and the special effects too. They pulled off so much without the aid of computers. This was all done in front of the camera. Those creepy shadows that don't match with Dracula's movements, that was a visual trick caused by an extra making the shadows out of view of the camera. The practical visual effects really helped this movie feel grounded something that you should take seriously. This movie was made at the perfect time, I think, as practical effects reached their zenith in the 80s and 90s, before computers came along and 
basically half killed the industry. However, one thing I really don't care for, aside from Keanu Reeves having the charisma of a plank, is unfortunately a central aspect to this movie's plot, and that is the romance between Dracula and Mina. I understand that this is part of the whole reincarnation thing and making Dracula into a more sympathetic character, but it kinda just doesn't work for me. I mean, this would be like taking Godzilla, a terrible destructive monster, and turning him into a wholesome dad. Oh, wait, they, they did that too. I guess it kinda works, I just prefer the scary, untamable monster, I guess. What can I say? I'm a dude. So, final thoughts. Bram Stoker's Dracula is definitely easily the most visually appealing of any Dracula movie. Baboon, ass, wig, and all. You've got some really great acting, some really poor acting, and a script that you'll either love or hate depending on your sensibilities and what you're looking for in a Dracula movie. If you wanted more horror, while there's some great horror moments here, it's not really a horror movie per se. If you're into Beauty and the Beast type romance, then this movie might be more up your alley. As for myself, well, I said I'd be ranking all of the Draculathon movies in the end, so here we go. And remember, these are just my personal preferences and not a definitive statement on what is the best Dracula movie. I'll leave that one up to you. So at number 5 is Nosferatu 1979, the one starring Klaus Kinski. While this may be a better film than some of the others on the list, like I said in the review, it is a total mood to watch and I kinda have to already be in the right mindset to watch this one. At number 4 is Dracula 1958 starring Christopher Lee. This one ranks lower because it's definitely the simplest adaptation on the list, and Christopher Lee is a legend, but he can only run so far on a short track. At number 3 is Bram Stoker's Dracula. As I've stated in this review, there's a lot I love and a lot I hate about this movie, but the amazing visuals and art style are just too good to leave it at the bottom. At number 2 is Dracula 1931 starring Bela Lugosi. Bela Lugosi is the most iconic Dracula. Period. And that's really all there is to say. And at number 1 is Nosferatu 1922. The original for me is still the best. This is the one version that I watch religiously every year. It's creepy in its silence, it influenced all later Dracula movies, and of course it stars a man named Shrek. Well, that's gonna do it for Draculathon. This was a lot of fun to put together, and I hope you've enjoyed it. So, don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you've been following along and haven't done so already. Have a happy Halloween and a good spooky night.